Hi, I'm Chelsea with the Los Angeles Maritime Institute, and I'm here today to talk to you about navigation. So navigation is the art and science of finding where we are. The easiest way to navigate is something that you do every day. It's just looking, looking around, finding out where you are in relation to other things. But let's say you wanted to go somewhere a little more exotic. Who doesn't, right? For, to do that, you're going to need some more tools. And humans have always wanted to go to far places, so we have developed lots of tools to help us navigate. Mainly maps, or if you are on the water, the very specific version of a map, a chart. There's also a lot of other tools that go with it, such as parallel rulers to help you keep your straight lines and move them around the chart or dividers, which help you find distances and points. We also use compasses, probably familiar with it. It uses the magnetic fields of the Earth to point north. Now on the chart, we actually have two compasses, you'll see. We have one on the outside, and this one is pointing to true north. If you notice the star, that's where that's pointing to. And then there's an inside compass with a little arrow also pointing north. This one is our magnetic compass. As you may notice, they are slightly different from each other because true north is directly above the North Pole. Direct the pole itself. And the magnetic north is actually not directly above the North Pole. It's actually kind of somewhere over Canada. And if you are traveling over large enough distances, that difference can actually pull you astray. So we always give directions in true. So here we are looking at a chart of the San Pedro Channel. This is a larger chart. We use it for transversing between San Pedro Bay and Catalina. Also on here is Los Angeles and Long Beach. Now just looking over the chart in general you may notice a few different colors on here. We've got this light tan color for the land. We've got a lot of white that indicates deep water. We've got blue near the coast indicating shallower water and we have green in some areas indicating very very shallow water. You'll see this bar right here. This is called a traffic separation scheme. It's for very large boats. If you are going one way you stay on one side and if you're going the other way you stay on the other side and no one hits each other and everyone's happy. We also have over here, this is another channel. It's very hard to make a roadway on a boat. You can't pave water. So what we do instead is we put buoys. Each of these purple dots indicate a buoy. And as long as you stay in between those buoys, it is safe passage into the shallower harbor. When you, when you see a buoy with a little exclamation point, that means that it has a light on it. What's really cool on this chart is you can actually see where the continental shelf kind of drops off. And it goes from about 48 to 138 to 209, all very quickly dropping off for the channel there. Now, looking at some other things, you'll see, you'll notice a bunch of lines in the white and on land, there are a bunch of lines. Those are topography lines. They are a 2D way of representing height or in the water case, depth. There's also associated with those lines, a bunch of numbers. And these numbers will indicate depth. Sometimes they are in feet. In this case, they are in fathoms. A fathom is about six feet. So the depths you see on the chart are found by using mean low low water. That's an average number taken at the lowest tide. Now I want you to find the average depth around Catalina. If the depths are 14, 27, 43, 35, 42, 28, 50, and 32, what is the average depth around Catalina? So we brushed a little bit about the different types of compasses and north, but what if you don't want to go north? There are many other directions you can go. And being a circle, they are conveniently divided up into 360 degrees. And when you pick one of those degrees to go, we call that a bearing or a heading. Now, 
if you are trying to find where you are in all of this chart, there are three ways to do it. One way, the easiest, if you can see things, is to use a compass. You're going to take your handheld compass and you are going to find your bearing in relation to an actual world object that is also on the chart. So for this example, I've taken a bearing from Eagle Reef and we are 290 degrees relative to Eagle Reef. And I took a bearing from Ship Rock and we are 30 degrees relative to Ship Rock. So if I draw a 290 degree line from Eagle Reef and a 30 degree line from Ship Rock, that will intersect and give us our position. And I know we only did two, but to be even more accurate, you can absolutely throw a third one in there. Now, the oldest form of finding where you are is with actual math. It is called dead reckoning, not D-E-A-D, -E it's D-E-D for deductive reckoning. And that is based on the principles that if you know how fast you are going and how long you are traveling, then you can find out how far you went and you can mark it down. This is how a lot of places were discovered by the Europeans. So how dead reckoning works mathematically is that speed, time, and distance are all related to each other. If you know how fast you are going times how long you are going, it will give you your distance. And being related to each other, you can actually move them around relative to each other. So if you wanted to find your speed, it equals your distance divided by your time. Now let's say we were traveling at six knots for 40 minutes. How far would we have traveled? Now, in modern times, we have developed a system to find out where we are, which you don't even need to take bearings for. It involves a GPS, which is something you're probably very familiar with. Whenever you use Google Maps, how does Google Maps know where you are? They are using a global positioning system. And they do that with latitude and longitude. Now, latitude and longitude are an invisible grid system that circled the Earth. Latitude lines run east to west, and they tell you how far north or south you are from the equator. And longitude lines run north and south, and they tell you how far you are east and west. Here in Los Angeles, we are at 33 degrees north and 118 degrees west. Now, degrees are quite large measures of units. From Los Angeles to Catalina, it is all actually still 33 degrees. So we're gonna to need to get a little more accurate to find a position. So we're gonna throw in minutes. Right here, where our boats are docked, we are at 33 degrees, 43 minutes, and 118 degrees, and 16 minutes. Now that you have our position, calculate how long it will take to get from San Pedro to Eagle Reef, which is four nautical miles away, if we were going 2.4 knots. So that was Intro to Navigation. If you are looking for more information, check out our YouTube channel, or if you want to join us and actually put these skills to use, check out lammytopsail.org and sign up for summer camps.